Welcome, welcome, patrons. Are you feeling okay? Been sleeping well? Feeling a little anxious? You know, I think I might have just the thing for that. Some tinfoil. I got a PM from Warzer Functioning, who you may remember for her other theory on Corypheus being related to Hawk. This time, she brings in an equally crazy theory that I thought was too fun to pass up. Let's talk about Liliana. The theory. Liliana wasn't born. She isn't even a real human. She's a lyrium creation with false memories. Wards compares the idea to replicants in Blade Runner. For those who haven't seen the movie, think androids who are given memories to think they are real people. The evidence. So some of you may or may not know, but in a very specific world state, something weird happens to Liliana. If you kill Liliana in Dragon Age Origins, no matter what, she comes back in Dragon Age 2. She will even talk about how she died in Haven and Dragon Age Inquisition and that the hero Ferelden killed her, but she somehow survived. Obviously, this pissed off a lot of people, seeing as it blatantly ignores choices from Dragon Age Origins. But if Liliana in this world state does not become divine during the Trespasser ending credits, it says this. Eventually, Liliana became distant and contemplative, often secluding herself in the rookery with none but her ravens for company. One morning, the residents of Skyhold awoke to a great beating of wings and a vast cloud of ravens blotting out the sky above the fortress. Those who investigated found both the rookery and Liliana's chambers vacant, with only a single message as explanation. The lyrium sang thought into being. Now time is stale and the melody is called elsewhere. Until I am needed, I am free. Uh, what? There's been speculation as to what this could mean. Is she the thought that was sung into being? Why and how can Lyrium do that? Does it mean a titan when it says Lyrium? Does this have something to do with the amount of red Lyrium that you can find around the Temple of Sacred Ashes? As Ward says, this is often considered one of the biggest retcons in Dragon Age history, but her thought is, what if she was a Lyrium ghost either way? Ward gives a helpful bullet point list for proof, so I'm just going to go down that list. In the quest In Hush Whispers, Liliana is resistant to Red Lyrium slash the Blight. She's experimented on and tortured for this very reason. This would imply that whatever makes her resistant is true regardless of whether the Warden killed her. This information is not in the Codex entry, but actually in a note, which means you can read it when you're in that area in the game, but then no more, which is kind of frustrating. But anyway, here is that bit. Introduction of Blight prisoners yields no discernible patterns. Disease progress erratically. Some subjects die within hours despite all efforts, others show no symptoms at all. Subjects may harbor some natural resistance, which makes isolation and testing a priority. A later entry follows. Six more subjects died. Transfusions of blood from resistant prisoners slowed the rate of corruption only slightly. Healthy flesh taken from live subjects and implanted in the infected will often die even before corruption spreads to it. In cases where the implantation is successful, blight corruption spreads across donor flesh faster than host flesh. Prisoner Liliana has been the most useful source of resistant blood and skin to date. So how does this connect Liliana to Lyrium? In the Descent DLC, your party will point out that isn't it strange that the Lyrium and the Wellspring are free of taint and any darkspawn presence at all? We know from the presence of red Lyrium that Lyrium can be tainted, but perhaps there is some resistance there. Liliana has visions. She tells the Warden that she had a vision and that is why she joined them. And Liliana hears voices. In the Liliana Song DLC, we get to hear the voice. After she survives a wound that should have killed her, a voice tells her to fight for those who can't. From World of Thetas Volume 2, in which a sister of the Lothering Chantry recounts her time with Liliana. She tells me about this dream of her falling into an encroaching darkness, allowing it to take her under. She said it was so real, like she was there, and then showed me this perfect white rose that she found from the cloister garden, from the rose bush beneath the arbor. It had been dead for two winters, and then a single flawless rose when there were no leaves and no other sign of life. She thought it was a gift from the maker. While we think of Lyrium as typically being blue, white is an unusual color to be assigned with it either, as we see in Fenris's Lyrium markings. Wards also suggests that the darkness that takes her under sort of does sound like a cavern. Liliana saved Tavris's mother. Tavris mentions that she has a child and she'll raise to admire humans like Liliana. She also meets Dorothea, who appears to be a middle-aged woman. Liliana in this DLC appears to be young. 
and Dragon Age Origins that child, Warden Tabris, has become a young adult, and by Dragon Age Inquisition, Dorothea, aka Justinia V, is an elderly lady with white hair. Liliana, however, has barely changed. I have some thoughts on this, but we'll put it down in the rebuttal section, but this could also explain, despite being around 40 years old, why Liliana looks so young in Inquisition. Also, as I suggested in my Tug in the Stone video, which explores the strain's encryption on his weapon, the stone lives beneath Orlay. If he's connected to a titan and Liliana is connected to a titan, then it would explain why he did what he did, which was die trying to save Liliana in Sketch. And then we have the letter Liliana tried to send Sketch about Tug, where she essentially implies she knows Sketch was a spy and suspects Tug was as well, but is unsure for whom or why. In this letter that Wards mentions, it's from Liliana to Sketch, and she is trying to get his help for figure out where Tug was from. But she also mentions that Sketch is from somewhere unknown as well, and perhaps somewhere unusual. Liliana admits she doesn't know the reasons that the three of them came together, but she does suggest that it wasn't by accident, and what if the purpose was Liliana's unusual circumstance. To add on this, the codex entry for Sketch, it states that he had large tomes with him, one of them being named Philosophy and Ethics regarding the manipulation of summoned creatures. Could it be that the summoned creature here is Liliana? Liliana's song, not the DLC but the one she actually sings, bizarrely is a Dalish lullaby. Some people think that this means Liliana's mother is an elf. I'm thinking maybe she had no mother at all, and the stone just supplied a bunch of random images to her, including the lullaby and the Andraste's grace. It almost sounds like Liliana is beginning to suspect the same thing. From World of Thetis Volume 2, in Liliana's most vivid memory of her early childhood, she sees herself, a child of little more than four, holding her mother's hand as they stand out on the stone terrace of an Arlesian villa, looking out at the cresting waves of the waking sea. Behind them are gardens of sweet orange and lavender, but the only fragrance that stands out to Liliana is the gentle scent of her mother's grey linen dress. These days, Liliana is unsure if the moment is real or merely imagined, but cherishes it nonetheless, and it is one of the few images she retains of her Ferelden mother, Ossine. The Rebuttal Like most tinfoil, some of this I can't explain away, but I do have a few critiques. On the voice that Liliana hear in Liliana's song DLC, I've heard many times that people have believed this to be an unknown person, but am I the only one who thought it was just Mother Dorothea slipping her the key? In fact, I am 99% positive that it is Mother Dorothea. Listen to the voices. Marjolaine is adept at striking where you are most vulnerable. Believe me, I know. No, no. If you wish a full introduction, I am formally revealed Mother Dorothea. Or if that doesn't get you, how about the fact that Liliana asked her why she helped her or she gave her the key? Granted, in response, Dorothea is being a bit coy about it, but I believe it wasn't some voice that Liliana just hears, but Dorothea herself breaking her out of jail. Also on Dorothea and Adaya's age, Dragon Age Origins in general has a lot of issues with timekeeping, and there is a fair amount from the game that has been overwritten in time. Even if you aren't willing to believe it is a mistake in the game, then you're going to have to believe that Sketch and Marjolin don't age either, as we see both of them after the DLC, and neither have seemed to age a bit. Another big hit is how she is talked about in World of Thais Volume 2. There would have to have been a real Liliana at some point. Too many people like Josephine and Marjolaine met Liliana when she was younger. Hell, Marjolaine met Liliana when she was 16. For this theory to be true and that Liliana is an ageless lyrium construct, Marjolaine and Josephine would have to meet the real Liliana, and then something happened to create the construct in between the short time between Liliana's song and when you meet her in Lothering. Also because I said something like this for Sarah is Andrew theory, I should mention it here as well, companions don't all have to be secret gods and strange constructs, sometimes they are just what they are at face value, at least as long as you don't have a very specific world state. But I will say, we only find out dead Liliana is a Lyrium ghost if she isn't divine. If she is, she stays on as divine. Will people not notice an ageless divine? Will she just disappear one day? Perhaps these ghosts can age and act just like other people. Perhaps there is more like them and we just have to hope whoever is pulling their strings are working in our favor. And that, dear patrons, is all that we know of this theory. Thank you again to user Warger Functioning. It was a ton of fun working with you again. Do you still have lingering questions, proof that I'm wrong? Comments about your own fan theory. Feel free to tweet me at, at on Twitter or send a PM to user Gillanon on Reddit. The rest are all.